It's Rick and Roxy. Wow, you're good. Preparation is awesome. Yes, Rick it is. Rick and Roxy, good morning. Man, you got some good pipes. You should, uh, well, <laughs> I think you've already got a pretty good gig. How are you guys doing? How's Peoria? Good, good. Peoria. Uh, you know, it was, it was pretty exciting for me when I started doing some research and realizing, uh, actually, I saw... Uh, an article that was done in the Springfield newspaper that you were born there and then transplanted here. And I'm kind of the same way. I was born here, transplanted there for 20 plus years, and then now back to Peoria. So I still got ties in both communities. So it was kind of cool to see that someone else has ties to both communities, but has gone on to much bigger and better than, than this little guy has. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, I, Central Illinois has awesome radio, I think. Every time I come home, I'm always commenting on how much more fun it is to channel surf. Well, that's one thing I was going to ask you is how often do you actually make it back and do you still kind of consider this home? Do you still have ties to the area? Um, yeah, of course. I, uh, I lived in Peoria for, you know, pretty much from eight eight years old through my exodus to college. And Peoria has all of my mother's so family, extended family on my mother's side. And uh, they're all back, they're all back there still. So our Thanksgiving, uh, our Thanksgivings tend to originate in Peoria somewhere. Nice. Recently, recently with, with cousin Julie. Cousin Julie hosts. Right. Well, shout out to cousin Julie if she's shout listening this morning. Cousin Julie. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest with you, Aaron. I've never talked to an Oscar winner. I have, <laughs> I have talked to an Oscar nominee. I was fortunate years ago to have Ray Liotta on my show because he had some Peoria ties as well. But uh, he'd only been nominated. You're an actual winner. What does that feel like? Wow, Ray Liotta. Yeah. What, what, were, his, <laughs> what were his Peoria ties? He married a girl from Richwoods High School. Really? Yeah, and her family owned a restaurant, and he would come back and shake hands and kiss babies to help them promote their restaurant. How about that? I know, right? Very cool. Uh, right yeah. here in Peoria. The, uh, the Oscar uh, chapter of my life was a lot of fun, and one of, the, one of the things that was most fun about it is that we did bring the film, the short film, back to Peoria, to kind of share it with that whole crowd. Um, I did the same thing for Get Low, uh, uh, you know, created a screening. You know, it's like bar mitzvahs and weddings and funerals. Uh, <laughs> bring back, you know, bring back people from all walks of your life. And um, one of the benefits of being a filmmaker is that movies, movies can do the same thing that weddings and bar mitzvahs and funerals can do. <laughs> um, they can be a great excuse to see people you haven't seen in a long time. So yeah, we were, we brought two soldiers back and even, and, and uh, there might even be some people in Peoria who remember it. Per Ron Perlman, who had a part in my show. Oh, wow. He came back and, and, um, and we went out on the town and it was a really fun time. So two soldiers was the short that you won the Oscar for. Then you also had, uh, Get Low, which you mentioned, which was Robert Duvall, Sissy Spacek, Bill Murray, amongst others. Roxy, you said you watched that the other night. I did. And your review? It was pretty amazing. Robert Duvall, first of all, just perfect for that role. Um, but my interest was how is Bill Murray going to play a funeral director? And it was outstanding. Like You need to get on it and, and watch it as well. <laughs> And that brings yeah. us more up to date, Aaron. Your new project that everybody's talking about is Greyhound. Yes, Greyhound. Out in, uh, now, now showing on Apple TV+. Plus. Now that's a pretty big feature to go straight to that platform. If I'm not mistaken, that's one of the first features to go straight to that platform. Am I right? Uh, yeah, I think Apple has a couple of smaller feature films. You know, they recently kicked off their streaming service. Right. Uh, and they've got some really good shows. Um, 
but you know, they're just beginning. And uh, along came the pandemic. And uh, when Greyhound faced such an uncertain future, uh, it was decided by the powers that be that um, Apple might be a, a great way of finding an audience in a world where audiences were getting harder to find. And uh, that's how that all happened. But it was originally slated to be released in the theaters June 13th. But we obviously missed that. Right. <laughs> but you had to feel good going in knowing you had America's dad signed on. That's right. I mean, with Tom Hanks helming a film, that had to be pretty exciting. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I've been very lucky with my leading men. Uh, yeah. When you work with legends, it makes your job a lot easier for sure. Uh, but yeah, it, he was a lot of fun to work with. And, and because he wrote it and he and his partner, Gary Getzman produced it. Um, we were able to, uh, I was able to kind of get to know his Tom, not just as an actor, but as a, you know, creative partner and a producer and get to know his production company, uh, who you may know has produced a lot of amazing stuff. Yeah, play Playtone Productions, which was sure. one of the questions I was going to ask, is obviously you've got uh, a multiple Oscar award winning actor you're working with and directing, but on the other side of that, he's also one of the money guys behind it. How is that relationship work? <laughs> by, by money guys, you mean? Well, his production company is involved as well, oh. so does that kind of lends him some creative control and things like that? Yeah, uh, the financing uh, is much more of a financing, you know, aspect of the movie, whereas Playtone was on the producing side. Gotcha. Uh, producing doesn't necessarily mean financing, but um, but yeah, we got to uh, I got to work with Playtone and um, and all the the people inside that organization, and they've done things like Band of Brothers and. Pacific and, and, uh, you know, all the way back to, I think earth to the moon, if I'm not mistaken, um, just really top, top notch, uh, long form television. Uh, so, you know, they, they were, they were on a roll long before I, I came in and it was, it was fun to be a part of that. Now tell us a, a little bit about the, the the film. It's again, you'd mentioned Band of Brothers and Pacific. It's along those lines as far as uh, a military setting. What's what can people expect from Greyhound? Well, Greyhound is uh, a unique film, a, a unique war film in the sense that it's uh, it's not Saving Private Ryan. It's not um, Band of Brothers. Um, what Greyhound does is it is it almost beams you aboard the USS Keeling, which is a Navy destroyer, uh, a destroyer that's escorting 37 ships uh, in a convoy, supply convoy on their way uh, to the UK to supply the war. And the destroyer along with three other ships is responsible for shepherding these ships uh, through at that period was, through what at that period was, a, was sometimes U-boat infested waters. There was an area between the east, between the um, between North America and Europe, uh, in the middle of the Atlantic, where airplanes couldn't reach convoys from either side of that journey, and it left them vulnerable for a period of three or four days. It was called the Black Pit, and and the movie puts it, the movie puts you aboard this destroyer, protecting this convoy, standing next to this character. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander Krauss in this case, and just and you just follow this man through a this a harrowing three day experience. Um, it's it's very experiential. It puts you right next to him and just it doesn't tell you it doesn't tell you too much. It just throws you into the scenario and forces you to to tag along. And you learn as you go. Uh, it's a very procedural environment. It puts you right in the middle of the way those pilot houses, those bridges used to work and the kinds of equipment and the challenges that it took to defend yourself and to attack. And, and, it's, and, it, and it's, it's just a 
three-day nightmare. So it sounds as though it's a little more intimate than a typical war epic. Like you said, it's not Saving Private Ryan. This is more almost one-on-one -on -one with the character Tom Hanks portrayed. Exactly. Uh, you know, so it's a bit of a character study in that regard. You're getting to know, as you're familiarizing yourself with your environment and, and getting a sense of, um, getting a sense of, of how everything works, this old equipment, the radar, the sonar, the, the methods by which these, these men uh, did their jobs. You're also getting to know the man piece by piece, watching him, watching the command dilemmas and the, um, and the no-win scenarios that someone in that position is presented with. And uh, the action is pretty much nonstop from the start because these U-boats used to attack in, in what they called packs, wolf packs. And when they found a convoy, they really tore into it. And, and that's those, the three days fighting off that wolf pack is what the movie's about. Greyhound is the movie. It's available on Apple TV. We're talking with Aaron Schneider. Uh, I hope this doesn't offend at all, Aaron, but I'm going to say local boy done good. I mean, Oscar winner from right here in central Illinois. Spent part of his life in Springfield, part of his life, uh, a good chunk of his life here in Peoria as well before obviously going on to bigger and better things. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I started, I went to Illinois Valley Central High School down in Chillicothe, and then I, I did reasonably well in math and science, so uh, I shipped myself off to Iowa State for an engineering degree. Got about two and a half years into that and realized it wasn't something I was gonna enjoy, and uh, had always had an interest in visual effects, special effects in movies, having read a magazine called Cinefix. Uh, and back then, you know, the business, you know, there wasn't as much behind the scenes available back then. There was, right. Today, there's a YouTube video for anything you might, <laughs> you might be interested in, right? As yeah, a, you can become an young, expert overnight. Uh, yeah, as a young person, if, if you're interested in something, there's a way to explore it. Back then, it wasn't so easy. And this magazine kind of opened up a door into a world that I thought was really fascinating. And, um, and so our family was on vacation uh, my sophomore year in college down in Florida. And Billy Crystal was down there. And my, I forget whether it was my mom or my dad. They said, why don't you go over and ask Billy Crystal how you get into special effects? <laughs> and my parents did that to me yeah. all the time growing up. Yeah. <laughs> And so I went over and he was laying by the pool and his young daughters were swimming. Um, and I said, I introduced myself and I told him what was going on and he recommended film school, which again, back then was not, Fantastic. was not something that was, you know, you walk into your high school counselor's office, film school, <laughs> and there weren't any film school pamphlets. Right. Um, and so my father and I, we looked into it, took a trip to California to look at some schools, and I applied to two or three and got into USC, which was probably the most competitive. So I got kind of lucky, and I transferred in. And um, I was, and like, one of the things Billy Crystal said was the great thing about film school is you'll be exposed to all aspects of filmmaking because you have to find your passion, you have to find your niche. And, um, and he was right because I was drawn to cinematography and I graduated and started shooting music videos back in that, you know, heyday of MTV. And um, Eminem, that, Cypress Hill, among that others. Yeah, that eventually led to, to uh, a television opportunity with Stephen Bochco's uh, oh, nice. company. And that led to features. And, uh, and then at some point I said, you know, I'd like to try and make my own film. And that's what led to Two Soldiers, the, the short that won the Oscar. And, and funny enough, it wasn't until uh, that night when I was walking up on stage that it dawned on me, uh, there was Billy Crystal standing there in the corner of the stage hosting. Um, and, I, it, and of course I knew, you know, I knew he was going to host, but the whole sort of full circle quality to that story didn't hit me until, so I got up to the mic and I said, first, I, first thing I said, I had something prepared, but I pointed back at him and, and I said, Billy, thanks for recommending film school. 
so many years ago. And did he have any idea? Any? Did he remember at all? Did it click? Oh God, no, he wouldn't remember that. But I, <laughs> I did get to see him afterwards, and I told him what he'd done. Um, That's fantastic. And which was fun. So it's one of those moments in life where everything kind of comes full circle. Well, my question for you, Aaron, is: Does Billy Crystal have an Oscar? I don't know. Ah, see. <laughs> He needs to be knocking on your door. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Billy Crystal's, uh, he's, you know, he's, uh, he's got a, quite a list of accomplishments himself. Yeah, he's done all right for himself, I suppose. Well, we appreciate you spending some time with us again. Aaron Schneider, who is the director of the new major motion picture, Greyhound, that stars Tom Hanks. It's... Uh, it's a war film, but it's not your atypical, your traditional war film. It's more of an intimate look at, uh, like you mentioned, Mr. Schneider, a character study. That's right. Uh, and you can check it out on Apple TV. Apple TV Plus. What is next for director Aaron Schneider? Well, at any given time, a filmmaker has several irons in the fire. Uh, and, but the, probably the most, um, visible one at this point would be a project called Bums Rush that, uh, has Anne Hathaway and Bill Murray and Robert nice. Duvall, uh, associated with it. It's, it was written, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful drama that involves a very philosophical stray dog that, boy, that, 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 that narrates the the story through the mind's eye of a dog, which, and this will, and it'll be voiced by Bill Murray. I was going to say, please um, tell me the dog's going to be Bill Murray. That just yeah. sounds like <laughs> <not perfect. laughs> And, uh, but it's, you know, it's not a talking dog movie. It's a, it's a very unique piece um, that sort of tracks the absurdity of human behavior through the mind's eye of a dog, the way they see the world. I love um, it but ultimately, uh, uh, you know, ultimately a drama. Um, and we took that to the recent Cannes film market, which is typically like any other market where everyone comes together, right. in this case over in Cannes, um, to pitch their films and share them with buyers uh, in rooms. But this year they did it virtually online. So we, and everyone had to invent new ways of, communicating and sharing what they thought the project could be. And so we put together a video presentation, you know, from our homes and, and, and uh, cut together image reels and things like this. So that, that that market this year was online as opposed to in person. So that was an interesting experience. Uh, but yeah, um, several things, um, cooking, uh, which is pretty typical for anyone in the industry because everything kind of everything kind of boils and at its own rate and you never know which one's going to come off the stove first see that's insight that i wouldn't have thought or known myself i was uh again just on the uh, internet movie database page and looking and uh there's not a lot after greyhound uh, and so I wondered, does that mean, you know, you do a great big picture and you take two years off? How's that work? But you say you're always working on something. It just depends on which one bubbles up. Yeah, IMDB for anyone is the tip of a very massive iceberg. Uh, for every credit you see, there was probably, you know, 10 projects that, that potentially, you know, take 10 year period in an IMDB page and there might be, 30 to 100 projects that were being discussed or played around with or experimented with. Um, and it's just that the ones on IMDb are the ones that got made. Um, and the same goes for any, any of the films on an IMDb page that talk about what's coming in the future. A little there's peek probably, behind the curtain. Yeah, there's probably, a, a, you know, 10 times more stuff going on than, than any given IMDb page would ever be able to convey. Well, we appreciate you spending some time with us. We don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh, but again, I want to remind folks, uh, Aaron Schneider, uh, Academy Award winning director 
uh, won the Academy Award for the short film called Two Soldiers. Also has uh, another uh, major motion picture, Get Low, with some pretty heavy star power and Robert Duvall, Sissy Spacek, Bill Murray, uh, coming soon, if you will, or at least one of the irons on the fire. Again, you get to work with uh, Mr. Duvall and Mr. Murray, and you throw Anne Hathaway in there, who's another uh, award-winning actress. Um, that following, working with America's dad, Tom Hanks, on the latest movie, Greyhound. That's, uh, that's a nice little resume you got going for yourself for, for uh, uh, a kid from right here in central Illinois. Yeah, I may have, I may have the stars, but you've got Ivani's. So, uh, <laughs> do we need to send some to you out there in LA? You know, I keep, I keep plugging Avanti's uh, in all of these articles, <laughs> waiting for my free frozen box of gondolas <laughs> to show up. That's and awesome. they, they have not appeared yet. They have not <laughs> shown up yet. We'll, well, have to, we'll, have to, we'll have to give them a call and see if they deliver. The is Uber. there anything else you want? Do you want a chili dog from Lou's? Or, or any, uh, let me ask you real quick before we let you go. When you come back to visit, like you said, sometimes over the holidays and things, what is an absolute stop? Is it Avani's? Is it uh, a certain watering hole? Where's your Peoria place? Oh, wow. Well, yeah, no, Avani's. Ivani's is uh, definitely a stop. Um, and then I also like to, I like to, uh, I like to drive back to the house I grew up in. I, there was a, a family that just moved out of the house I grew up in recently. And so someone's living in my house now who I've not met. And, um, and I, I got to know the family living there. And so, and they might've been there six to eight years. And so I was able to knock on the door and they're saying like, Hey, Aaron. And they let me in and I, and I, wow. I got my little tour. Um, the, the first time I visited, I introduced myself and I, and I told them that our family wrote, I wrote our name, a little dedication in the attic when we, when we moved out, um, just as an icebreaker when I met the family and they said, Oh my gosh, you got to see this. And they took me upstairs and in the, I don't know, 15, 20 years that had passed, there were four other families that had lived and moved out that had written their own dedications in the attic. Right. How awesome is that? That, that um, is really neat. And that was the, you know, so like that was the sort of flashpoint and I got to know the family. And, and so whenever I visited, uh, and I was feeling sentimental. I could knock on the door and, and visit my old, the old house I grew up in. But see, now there's a new family there, and um, I'm gonna have to call. I'll have to knock and, and start all over again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron. I used to live here. No, wait, wait. I'm really normal. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really, I really recommend that you just take your uh, your Oscar, take your trophy with you. I think that's right. an icebreaker. Right. That. Uh, well, you know. We, it's funny you mentioned that we were people wanted to see that Oscar after we won it, so we we would travel with it. When I say we, my producer and I, um, and one time we were getting on the plane, and it wasn't too you know it was only three, four, five years after nine eleven, and uh, they would they wouldn't let us on the plane because they called it a blunt, heavy instrument that you could knock someone out with. Wow, um, and like. Well, you know, why don't you take this out and take a look at it? I think you'll see it's not a weapon. And they're like, yeah, it's an Oscar, but you can't get on the plane. Wow. <laughs> Unreal. Safety first. <laughs> right. Yeah, uh, I don't, I, I'd put a hole through the head and I'd wear it around like a chain if I ever won an award like that. Are you kidding me? I'd want well, everyone to know. It's, it's pretty heavy. You might, you might find it a little, a little heavy. As a, some neck issues. As a necklace. Hey, if someone wants to give me an Oscar, I'll take my chances. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, we appreciate your time today. Next time you roll back in through town, feel free to stop by, knock on our door. You're more than welcome. Uh, next project starts bubbling up. You want to tell some people uh, closer to home about it? You've got a resource to do so. Well, thanks. And, and keep up the great work. Everyone needs their entertainment back there in Peoria, I'm sure. 
Well, you as well. We get global entertainment from you. They can, they can come to us for the local stuff. How's that? That deal. Sounds good. Aaron Schneider, Oscar award-winning director. His new project, Greyhound, on Apple Plus TV. Apple TV Plus right now. Go check it out. It stars Tom Hanks, and it's uh, directed by Peoria's own Aaron Schneider. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me.